Hello guys and welcome to a very special edition of this week, or of Popper Ponderings I should say, where I'm going to be talking about all of the downgrades in Modern Masters 3 from rare and uncommon to common. And what does that mean? Well, while other sets get reprints and other sets get, you know, cards that are now affordable to their budget, you know, like Tarmac Whip down under $100, Liliana of the Veil like 75 bucks, I mean make sure you can check them out, check them all out on FusionGamingOnline.com, but anyways, all of these formats get these kind of not so much new cards, they just get, well, now I can afford Fetchlands, or now I can afford Blood Moon. But the cool thing about these modern master sets, and these eternal master sets, these eternal sets, if you will, or these entirely reprint sets, is that Popper gets new cards. Which is really cool to think about, because we get, in these limited format, or these limited centric sets, they're downgrading cards to make a better limited format. And with that comes 22 new cards to the Popper format, and 22 pretty powerful cards on top of that. Because normally you don't get this many, I guess, this high of a density in powerful cards like you do in normal sets. Because you have to have the filler, you know, all the nonsense, the 5 mana, 3-3 three, three with some niche ability. In this set, a lot of the power level is going to be pretty high. So we're going to get a lot of these cards. We have even a rare that got downgraded to common. We're going to have a lot of these cards, I think, are going to make a pretty big shakeup in the popper format, and I'm excited to check them out. Uh, but make sure, before you do anything else, like, share, and subscribe to this video. It's going to help me out a lot here at the Mana Base. We are a magic blog made by magic players for magic players. So make sure you check us out online, www.themanabase.com. Everything from cube to popper to commander to alterings by Clover Alters, as well as the exclusive home of GP Vancouver finalist John Nikachu Zacek. Make sure you check out all of his modern content over on his YouTube page, Nikachu MTG, as well as on the Mana Base at channel Nikachu. So, without further ado, let's get right into the new cards that we get from Modern Masters 3. So, jump over here. So, we'll start by color, and the first card we're going to talk about is Graceful, Graceful Reprieve. So this card was first originally printed in Morning Tide as an uncommon. It's one and a white for an instant, and when target creature dies this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So if you are not familiar with this card, it's very similar to the modern staple Safi Eric's Daughter, which is green and a white for a 2-2 legendary creature, and it essentially has the same effect when you sacrifice it. Now, what does Graceful Reprieve do? Well, Graceful Reprieve kind of fits into... What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight a couple of my previous Popper Ponderings decks, so and we can take a look at where some of these cards might fit in. So Graceful, Re Graceful Reprieve... I think has a chance to fit in something like, where is it here, this Sultai Lantern deck. Now obviously the mana would have to get worked around, but in this deck we're looking to, you know, sacrifice some creatures like Safehold Elite and Renclaw Tro, as well as any of these other kind of value creatures, or like something like a Muldrifter, and then get them back for value. So what, oh no, where did my deck go? Boom, right here. So as Graceful Reprieve states, we get to do this kind of thing where we're able to rebuy Muldrifter, rebuy all of those cards. And I think it could be something that we could definitely look at um, coming, going forward in, uh, in the modern metagame. In terms of what kind of actual decks it fits into, I'm not really sure. Um, it maybe kind of feels a secondary momentary blink target. Because, again, you can kind of play it as a save my creature in response to a removal spell. But I'm not sure that it is going to find its way into any actual decks right now. I actually also like it in uh, the Zubera's deck we played. But I think ultimately it is just worse than a card like uh, Undying Evil and a card like, um, what was the other one? Unearth. So moving on to our next card, we have Pitfall Trap. So this is two and a white for an instant, and it's a trap. And it states, if exactly one creature is attacking, you may pay white rather than pay rather than pay Pitfall's traps man Pitfall traps mana cost. And it says, destroy target attacking creature without flying. So I kind of have written down here. It's really just not, I guess, just not good enough to see play in Popper. And the Popper format's power level is very high, 
especially in terms of removal. Like, you have a lot of the best removal spells ever. Doomblade, uh, Chainer's Edict, uh, any sort of, you know, Burn Spell, Lightning Bolt. They're all going to be legal in the format. Having a conditional removal spell that only works on attacking creatures really just isn't good enough and really just feels like it was pushed down to, to common so that they could make more limited kind of interaction and, and have a more of a white control deck in the format. As for decks that I have that would fit into, I really don't see really any real application for Pitfall Trap. But an interesting card and an interesting flavor nonetheless. Moving on to the blue cards, we have Augur of Bolas, which is the first huge card that I think will make a huge impact in the popper format. These blue-black control decks that I make fun of every single week that have this Seagate Oracle nonsense in them, I think Augur of Bolas is a strict upgrade. With Augur of Bolas, if you build your deck correctly, you're going to be able to find something like a Manalink, something like a Counterspell, something like a Ponder, a Preordain. Every single time with this card, it's going to be very good. When this card was in Standard, it was the backbone of a lot of these blue mid-range tempo -y style strategies. We just played it out on two before they could really do anything, and then, you know, draw a good card. And this card, if your deck is built right, is going to draw you a card almost every single time. The old adage is, Augur of Bolas is scry the bottom three cards to your library. I don't think that's the case in Popper. I think you can build kind of a Delver shell where this card is going to draw you something substantial every single time you cast it. And I could see this taking the place of Seagate Oracle or just being played alongside Seagate Oracle in those blue-black control decks. Coming up next, we have Grasp of Phantoms. So this is three and a blue for a sorcery. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. Flashback seven and a blue. So like I talked earlier with Pitfall Trap, I don't think that this card just is good enough. It's a little slow. Spells have to be very efficient in the popper format. Creatures are already clunky enough. You cannot afford to tap four on your turn to do something that, you know, really doesn't forward you in the game. Especially as a control deck, you're really not doing anything. Four mana as a sorcery is just not good enough. Maybe if this was a non-land permanent, something like that. And seven mana or eight mana flashback is just ridiculous. Into the next card, we have Tandem Lookout. And this card is actually very sweet. It's two and a blue for a 2-1 creature, Human Scout. It has Soul Bond, which means you can pair this creature with another untapped creature when it enters the... Or unpaired creature when it enters the battlefield. And uh, those remain paired as long as you control both of them. And then each of those creatures has, when this creature deals combat damage to an opponent, draw a card. Oh, not even combat damage, just deals damage. So if you have like a Pinger or something, you're going to be able to draw a card. This card is very, very sweet, and I can see this going into, I don't want to say possibly replacing Ninja of the Deep Hours, but I can see some people trying it out. The fact that you have to attack with a guy, make sure it's not blocked with Ninja is pretty crazy. The thing that I see is that it, it does have one toughness, so it means it's, it's liable to things like Gutshot, things like Electricery that the Ninja wasn't. But I could certainly see this card, you know, definitely people trying it, and, and I'm excited to try it out. Maybe not in Delver, because I don't like to play those normal, you know, t top tier meta decks, if you will. But I'm excited to try this card, and I'm, I expect to see a lot of these cards in Popper Ponderings lists in the very near future, because I know you guys love brewing with new cards, and I think Tandem Lookout is very, very good. What do you guys think? Make sure you leave some comments down below to tell me how wrong I am, because I love being told how wrong I am. No, I'm just kidding. If you agree with me, let me know too. All the comments, the better. <laughs> uh, and that concludes our blue section. So let's go over to our black section here. And first up, we have the Grixis Slave Driver. So this is five and a black for a 4-4 four, four zombie giant. And when it leaves the battlefield, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. And then it has unearth for three and a black. So this is a cool card. And I think that there are a decent amount of decks that would use this effect. Like, there's a lot of carrion feeder decks that just exist in general. The problem here is, is that it costs 6 mana. Now, while for 6 mana you get a 4-4 four, four, and then a 2-2 two, two when it dies, there are a lot of other effects in the format, you know, something like a Blister Pod, any sort of Nest Invader type cards, that are just going to do this effect, and in the decks that want them, I think this is just too expensive, and 6 mana is so much in Popper. If you ever tried to resolve a 6 mana spell against, a six mana spell against Delver, it's just not going to happen, and I think you're just going to get hung out to dry far too often. Now, the fact that this has Unearth is pretty sweet, because when you Unearth it, it it's just a 4-4, it gets to attack, and then at the end of turn, because it says leaves the battlefield, you get a 2-2. 
So the application I could see for this card is in some sort of maybe black, r green, mi or dredge deck. Because if you get this into your graveyard, you pay for it, you bring it back, you attack, and then you get a 2-2 right away. The 2-2 to the is not tapped. I think that could be an application, but if you're planning on casting this thing, I think there's definitely better options. Moving on to our next card, we have Cower in Fear, which is one black black for an instant that says creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one until on a turn. Now you know if you're a frequent watcher of Popper Ponderings, you love, I love me some Electricery. Well, this is just Black's Electricery, and damn, is it good. Um, I think this card is going to be a mainstay in a lot of Black control decks. Being able to deal with these white token strategies out of blue-black control maybe even makes it playable, because not only does it deal it, it deals it one damage like Electricery does, minus one, minus one is just infinitely better. You're going to be able to win combat a lot of the time. This card is going to be good, and I expect that this will see a lot of sideboard play and maybe even some main deck play. So next up, we have the old Gnawing Zombie. This was actually one of my favorite all-time decks to draft. Uh, M14 Limited had this black red sacrifice like threaten steak take your guys sack them for value deck that i really really enjoyed and gnawing zombie was at the forefront of that deck you needed at least one possibly even two of this card to make it good and this is a card that i could see seeing some play if we're looking at this grixis slave driver card this gnawing zombie and then another couple cards that are coming along in black I could definitely see a deck built around this engine. Now, one in a black to sacrifice is a lot of mana, and we've talked about how Pauper is a very mana-intensive format. You need to be able to do things fast, you need to be able to do things cheaply, you need to be able to do things at instant speed. While this thing can do it at instant speed, it is expensive. Two mana to sacrifice a creature is a lot of mana to leave up, so that's why maybe it's going to be kind of difficult for this thing to take up the place of something like a Carrion Feeder or a Natuko Husk. But I am interested in this card because it does a lot of good work in terms of, of gaining that extra couple points of damage at the end of games that these black-green, sacrifice style Tortured Existence decks have a tough time doing. And that's going to be another card coming up right away that does the same thing. So next up, we have Mortician Beetle. So this is the card that was downgraded from a rare. This was a rare in Rise of the Eldrazi, if you can imagine that. It's one black for a 1-1 one, one insect. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on Mortician Beetle. So, this card's pretty sweet. Um, if you pair this with a, with a Carrion Feeder, they're both going to get large at the same time. Same with a Nantuko Husk. And I can see this very easily going into those black-green sacrifice decks that cards like Gnawing Zombie and cards like Grixis Slave Driver push people to build. Now, is this card good enough to play because not it doesn't sacrifice creatures and it doesn't sac get sacrificed well? There's a possibility of that, but one, two, maybe even three copies, depending on how good it is, I could definitely see be played. And this thing gets very big very fast. So I would not be surprised that this saw play in some sort of black-green kind of value deck. And into the next card, it is Falconrath Noble. So this is the first, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first version of this type of effect that has existed in Pauper. It's three and a black for a 2-2 flying vampire, and whenever if Falconrath Noble or another creature dies, target player loses a life and you gain a life. So this effect has existed in constructed formats for a long time. Uh, Blood Artist comes to mind and Zulabur Cutthroat come to mind, and both of those cards were very, very good in Standard, and some of them, Blood Artist, even sees play in Modern. Falconrath Noble never saw play in any constructed format just because it cost four mana. But the fact that this is common now means that these black-green decks, with the addition of Gnawing Zombie and Falconrath Noble, have this way to close out games that they didn't have before. Before, they would be kind of stuck in this spot where when it's a blue-black deck stabilized on them, or a blue-white deck or a green-white deck stabilized on them, they could not get those last few points across. Now, with Falconrath Noble, you're free to send your guys in, there's no real good attacks, this is a card that I could definitely see being played in the sideboard for sure, but maybe even the main deck of a lot of these green-black, and even like a black-white token strategy. That black-white tokens deck I played a few weeks ago with Harsh Sustenance, I could see this being played as the finisher of choice instead of that card, because not only is it a creature, but it's going to help you win races, and it's going to close the game out. And I really, really like this card, and actually when I was going through looking to find these cards, I had like... 11 of these in my collection from when I used to draft Innistrad a lot. So that's it for the black cards. We're going to move on to the red cards now. 
we have a Scorched Resulta. So this is one red for a 1-1 Spirit, and it has one red Sacrifice our creature, and Scorched Resulta deals one damage to target player. I think this card's just a little too narrow in its focus. It's okay, but I think that red just has too many good options, especially with a couple of the cards coming in this list, to see play anymore. But it is a decent card, and it's nice to have access to a card like this. Next up, we have... Scourge Devils, which is kind of a modern playable card out of Dredge. But if we're going to build some sort of Black Red or maybe even a Jun Dredge deck, this could be a pretty good finisher, as it's a 4 and a red for a 3-3. And when it comes into play, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and then it has Unearth for 2 and a red. So getting this thing to Unearth is actually a pretty good rate. You get a 3-3, a 4-3 even, and then uh, all of your creatures get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. So this is going to be able to enable a lot of pretty busted turns if you're trying to create a lot of goblin tokens or if you're looking to, you know, Faithless Looting. You can now play Faithless Looting and sign up a, maybe like a red-based token strategy and discard your Scourge Devil and kill them just in one fell swoop. I actually really like this card. I'm not sure if it has any real potential as five mana on the front end is a lot. You really have to get this thing into your graveyard to be able to be used effectively. But I do see that this thing could have some application in Popper as it is a very powerful effect. Into the next two cards we have Magma Jet, which I was very surprised actually that wasn't at, at common at one point, but it is a pretty powerful effect. It's one in red for an instant, and Magma Jet deals two damage, target creature or player, and then scry two. Now, what does a red deck really need, especially in a format like Popper where you don't get to play cards like Goblin Guide or Monastery Swiss Spear or Grim Lavmancer to deal those extra couple points. Because a lot of the times in the late game, they're for, they're taxed into playing cards like Needle Drop to kind of filter through their deck so that they can find the last couple points of burn spells that they need to finish off their opponent. What Magma Jet allows them to do is scry those extra two lands to the bottom. They're able to filter their draws a lot more effectively. And this actually gives them, I think, a kick in the in the nards that uh, this deck could probably use to, um, you know, definitely find itself back at the top of the metagame. I have very rarely played against this deck on pop, with, uh, with Popper Ponderings. And with Magma Jet, I expect it to come up a lot more and with the next card we see on our list. But I do think Magma Jet will be a role player in red-based aggro decks and red-based control decks from, from now on. And the last card in red is actually the card that scares me the most coming out of this set, and that is Thunderous Wrath. It is four red-red, and for an instant, and it deals five damage to our creature or player, and Miracle one red. Now, another... Not only does this work with Magma Jet very well, but also works with a little card called Brainstorm, a card that blue-red popper deck or blue-red kind of mid-rangey popper decks already play. This is absurd with Brainstorm, and I could see a lot of games kind of becoming this like thunderous wrath stalemate with Brainstorms, and I'm actually very very nervous as to where the format is going to go because that could be very well be a blue-red kind of burn counter deck that utilizes Brainstorm and Thunderous Wrath to get a lot of discounted one mana lav axes. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to have to do. I guess we'll have to wait and see. If you guys want to build me a Thunderous Wrath deck for next week once uh, Popper, or once these cards are legal on Pop, in Popper, I'm pretty well in because I am very nervous and I guess maybe a little optimistic to how powerful this card can be. If you think it's as powerful as I think it is, please make sure you comment below. And while you're at it, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. Check us out online, www.themanabase.com, for everything from Cube to Popper to Commander to Merfolk to Altering. Anyway, basically anything, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. Thanks for watching, guys. And yeah, I think Thunderous Wrath is actually just ridiculous. Um, I'm very scared with this card coming into the format. So moving on into green, first card we have is Slime Molding. And I've said this a million times, X in a green, you can make, I, I very rarely talk good about Gurmag Angler. This thing is just bad Gurmag Angler. Like best case scenario, you're making like a three, three for four, five, five for six. That just doesn't cut it in a format where Doomblade exists and where Innocent Blood exists and where Changer's Edict exists. So we're going to move on from this thing pretty quickly. I just don't think it's very good. Even in a Tron deck where you're looking to ramp into a bunch of mana, just play Ulmox Crusher, just, just play Rolling Thunder. Into our next card, we have Revive. 
This is one and a green for a sorcery and return target green card from your graveyard to your hand. This card is fine. It just, I think it's a little too narrow for what the format wants to do. The fact that the card has to be green limits it a lot. And I just, just it's just too narrow. Popper is, Popper's floor is very high in terms of, terms of what cards can be playable. And I just don't think that this thing grazes that at all. Now we go into our multicolor cards here. We have Gift of Orzova. It's one hybrid black white, hybrid black white for an aura. The enchant creature gets plus one plus one flying and lifelink. Now, if Boggles needed another card, I certainly didn't don't think it did, but apparently Wizards did. Because they put this thing at common and it is just gonna make me furious. Because they're gonna put this on their stupid slippery boggle or their stupid glade cover scout, and I'm just gonna lose. Because I hate boggles, and everyone who plays boggles should have a bad time. They should always mold the three. This card is just going to make me furious, and I don't want to talk about it that much more. If you love Boggles, please tell me below, but screw this card, screw Boggles, and if you play Boggles, I hope you always mold a three. Next card. Dinner of a Horror, I'm sorry for that outburst. I hate Boggles, but if you don't hate Boggles, you probably don't like dogs, you probably are a cat person. Hashtag dogs better than cats. Hashtag cats suck. Hashtag cats are the worst. Anyways, Dinner of a Horror, four blue black for a four four. When it enters the battlefield, return target permanent to its owner's hand, and then that player discards a card. This card is sweet. So, if there's any sort of blue-black control deck, this is definitely not only a good finisher, but it's a very good mid-to-late game card that is going to ruffle your opponent's feathers just enough to be able to untap and maybe start capsizing them. And again, when this, deck, when this card's in uh, top deck mode, you're able to bounce a creature, and if they have no cards in hand... They just lose it, so that actually gains you a lot of uh, a lot of equity there as well. This card was a house in Gatecrash Limited, if I remember correctly, and the card is just great. It does a really good job of stabilizing. If they have you know two or three too many creatures in play, you're able to bounce it, put a four four into play. They probably can't attack into you. It gives you another couple turns to find any sort of uh, removal for those creatures. This is a great card, and I think it'll be a great addition to this blue black deck that I still think is unplayable, but. You know what? It got a lot of tools with Modern Masters 3. And also, this thing is terrifying. Look at this, like an octopus thing. And like, what's it like, eating that guy? Yeah, that's a pretty scary guy. All right, moving right along to Spike Jester. So Spike Jester is black, red for a 3-1 haste goblin warrior. And uh, yeah, I think it's actually pretty decent. The problem here is that a good black, red aggro deck just doesn't exist. And it kind of sounds bad to say that, but... I don't think a 3-1 Haste really puts it into a deck. I think Black Red is just too hard of a mana cost for a payoff. The mana fixing is not good enough in Popper to play an aggro deck that is two colors and requires both colors on turn two. If you're looking to play an aggro deck, you're better off just playing a deck like Tokens or a deck like Mono Red Burn. 3-1 on the ground is just going to get blocked by, you know, Thraben Inspector or Raise the Alarm Tokens or a multitude of things. You know, throwing Squadron Hawk. It just it has good stats, but in a format where the ground gets clogged so often, I just don't think it's good enough. Into our next card, we have Ground Assault. This is red-green for a sorcery, and it deals damage to our creature equal to the number of lands you control. So this card is fine, and I've said before in this review that Popper is the format of removal first, creature second. This card is not a very objectively is not a very good removal spell. But if a red-green deck is looking to deal with something like a Gurmag Angler efficiently, this is a pretty good way of doing it. And I, I could see something like a green-red mid-range deck, maybe like that Lumberjacks deck we played a couple weeks ago, to utilize this card to deal with something like a Gurmag Angler. Because a lot of the time our creatures just aren't big enough, and we need to be able to win a race somewhere. And I definitely could see it having applications. I could definitely see it being a sideboard card for certain matchups where you need to take down big creatures where, you know, a lightning bolt or a burst lightning just can't deal with. Moving on, we have a very exciting red-green card. This is Burning Tree Emissary. This is green-red hybrid, green-red hybrid for a 2-2. When it enters the battlefield, add red-green to your mana pool. So this is a card that will definitely see play in any sort of red-green aggro deck. And I think it actually spawns like a red-green aggro token type strategy if you can throw this thing in play you know get this thing maybe two of them into a Krenko's command that's just like four to six power on turn two 
And the removal spells might be good in Popper, but they're good one for one. And what Burning Trimissary allows you to do is spread your forces very quickly. And I could definitely see this becoming a deck. Like, I don't know if it's Burning Trimissary into, you know, play to Geopede or Burning Trimissary into Crankle's Command into, you know, Goblin Bushwhacker the next turn. All of these seem incredible. And I'm excited to see where this card goes because I think Aggro is kind of getting a bad rap. And if it needs a card, I think this is that card. And finally... That's something in my throat. We have Call of the Conclave. Now, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I'm aware, this card does not exist in Popper yet. Green, two mana for a 3-3, no drawbacks. Now, the fact that it is a token is kind of a drawback because if it gets bounced to hand, it's dead. But this card is pretty powerful. Green, white, uh, you can create a 3-3 green centaur creature token. If you're going to play something like a Populate deck, you needed a card like this, and now that this card exists... There could be a deck there. You know, Rootborn Defenses, um, the One Green Fog could do the job as well. And I think this is something that definitely could see some play. And I'm excited to see like a green-white token strategy utilize this card. So now that we are all done, I figure, who doesn't love lists? We're going to go through the top five MM3 downgraded to common cards for a pop of drinks. Or for myself. And then afterwards, please... Feel free to either critique my top five list, call me an idiot, say I'm correct, or tell me some of my evaluations are wrong because I'm always interested in discussion. If you'll see in my other videos, I make sure to comment on, or I make sure to reply to all of your comments. I love every single one of them. So please make sure you let me know what you think of my ratings of these cards. So in number five, I have Falconrath Noble. This is three and a black, the two-two vampire. I think this is number five. I think this will see a lot of play in some sideboards, and it might even spawn its own kind of black-white tokens archetype. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. In at number four, we have Magma Jet. One and a red for the instant. It deals two damage to our creature or player. Just a really solid role player. It's going to see play in red-blue control decks, red-blue kind of mid-rangey decks, in burn decks. Any deck that is looking to deal some damage and find and try to get its late game draws better, Magma Jet is a great inclusion. In at number three, I have Tandem Lookout. The Maybe the Ninja of the Deep Hours Light. I could see this card going into Delver as is and possibly taking the role of Ninja of the Deep Hours. This allows you to get two of your creatures in play as, a, as they draw cards. And I just think that not having to bounce some of your creatures could be better. Having to bounce your Delver doesn't feel very good with Ninja of the Deep Hours, and I could definitely see this thing overtaking it. In at number two, we have Burning Tramissary. And I think this is the card that will create a new archetype, and that's really what I'm looking for here, is this card that can create their own archetype, and that's what I think Burning Tramissary does. It's going to create some of this green-red aggro deck that I'm very excited to see where it goes in the future. Krenko's Command, Play to Geopede, Goblin Bushwhacker, all these cards are going to be utilized in it, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So now, I guess before number one, we can have some honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one is Gift of Ozova. Boggles can go suck on a lemon. I'm you work at number one, so don't even think about it. It's going to be insane. I'm going to get beaten by it, and I'm going to be mad about it, but it's not number one. Mortician Beetle, also honorable mention. I think it'll see some play. I think it's pretty cool, but I just don't think that it'll be as big of a player as number one will be. Gnawing Zombie, and also an honorable mention. I think the card is kind of interesting, but a maybe a little bit too slow and maybe just a worse version of Carrion Feeder. So number one, you probably already guessed it just the way that I talked about the card, but Thunderous Wrath. I think this card is going to do huge things for both Mono Red and any sort of Blue Red Delver deck, and I think this might even make Delver Splash Red. That's how good I say this card is. That's a hot take. That is a Popper Pondering's hot take. I think that this card will make Delver play red. Because brainstorming this Thunderous Wrath is insane. One of the things that Popper, that Delver has trouble with is dealing with something like a Gourmet Angler or something huge or dealing the last couple points of damage. Well, no more! Brainstorm a Thunderous Wrath, 5 damage, good game, sign the match slip. I'm going to go 3-0. This card is insane. I'm telling you right now, this card may even get banned. I'm telling you right now, you can call me an idiot. Please call me an idiot in the comments. But this card might get banned, it's so good. I'm telling you this right now, in... You know, March 2018, when this card gets banned, I'm going to link this video again, and I'm going to be like, look, all of you guys, I told you Thunderous Wrath is going to get banned. Card's busted. Nobody wants to play against it. Miracles are no fun. It is the best card in Modern Masters 3.
I tell you this right now for Popper, not necessarily. The best card is obviously, you know, Tarmogoyf probably. But anyways, I'm happy, I'm glad, or I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This is my first, like, not gameplay video, kind of just a, a review. So if you guys like this format and you guys want to see more, I'm going to switch this over to, hello. Uh, if you guys like this format, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, if you did not agree with any of my card decisions, if you liked my card decisions, please comment. I will make sure to reply to all of you. I love it. I love it every single time you guys reply. It makes my day. Thanks for watching, guys. My name is Austin. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. It'll do me a lot of help. Check us out online, www.themanabase.com for all of your cube, commander, merfolk, altering, every kitchen table magic fix. We will help you out. Again, my name is Austin. Thank you for watching. And I will, again, I will see you guys on Thursday for this week's Hopper Ponderings. And make sure you send me those decks. I will be choosing my deck probably around 9, 30, 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So make sure you get me those deck lists. I'll be making the sub submission post pretty soon here. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys on Thursday for my normal episode of Popper Ponderings. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.